A precision approach like an ILS is designed to keep you on a continuous glide path and descent rate from the final approach segment, transitioning onto the visual segment and touchdown, so you don't have to change up your power or configuration much at the last moment. A non-precision approach, like this GPS approach with LNAV minimums into Georgetown, Kentucky, doesn't have a constant descent rate as part of its guidance. We descend down to a minimum descent altitude and then make a decision on when to go below or to go missed based on what visual cues we get. If we start our descent too early, we could impact terrain or obstacles. Too late, we might overrun the runway. The procedure designers often include this black V symbol a visual descent point, or VDP, to help us figure out when to begin a descent from the MDA on a non-precision approach. This one is located 1.2 miles from the runway threshold, which we identify in the cockpit with our GPS. Sometimes they'll be identified with something like a DME or a cross radial. The idea of having a VDP is to identify the last point on the approach from where a normal descent can be made from the MDA to the touchdown zone. It's based on two things. First, the MDA, but notice there are more than one MDA. The LNAV minimums are the same for all category aircraft, 1360, but they're higher for all circling minimums. It turns out that circling approaches won't have VDPs because it's not possible to maintain a constant descent to land on a circling approach. But on approaches where the straight-in MDAs are different, the VDP is based off the lowest one. That's not an issue on this approach under normal circumstances, but in the notes section, it says the MDA will be raised when an off-field altimeter setting needs to be used. And of course, on many approaches, different category aircraft will have different MDAs. So we're basing it off the MDA of 1360, even though we may not be at that altitude when we find the runway. We're also basing it off of what's called the vertical descent angle. Here, it's indicated as being 3.04 degrees. If there were no vertical descent angle published, we'd use the angle the Papier Vazi lights make. So the positioning of the VDP is based on where the descent angle will take us from the MDA to the touchdown zone. If we start a descent before that point, we'll need to descend at a more shallow slope. If we start after that point, we'll either need to descend fast or land long. Now here's an interesting rub which you see on a lot of non-precision approaches. The VDP is at 1.2 miles but the visibility requirement is only one mile. It's possible then to arrive at the VDP, not gain sight of the runway, continue along at the MDA, gain sight of the runway, and then proceed to land, all legally. Here's what that looks like from the cockpit. We're at the MDA watching the GPS for the VDP at 1.2 miles. It often makes sense to use the VDP as our decision point for going missed. Here's why. When we arrive at the VDP, and don't have sight of the runway, we continue on. At one mile, we just gain sight of the runway lights. The visibility is at absolute minimums. We can make our landing. Look at those pappy lights though, we're very high. We really need to chop and drop if we're gonna make our touchdown point. Alternatively, we can land long, but only if our aircraft is sufficiently slow and we have enough runway length. Here, our Cessna 172 will have no trouble using a little bit extra of the mile-long runway, but you can see how if you have a faster aircraft on a shorter runway, you might want to consider making the VDP your decision point. It's really up to you in your own approach brief. Whatever you decide, the VDP is not the missed approach point. That's still located at the runway threshold. So if you do decide to go missed at the VDP or any other time, you actually execute that decision at the runway. While adhering to a VDP isn't a hard legal requirement the way an MDA or a missed approach point is, there are many reasons why pilots play a conservative and make their decision point at this spot on a non-precision approach. Knowing your approach plates like the back of your hand is essential to the IFR student, and it's covered in depth along with other important topics in our IFR ground school, which you can check out today at the link here or in the description.